So friends, Donald Trump is now calling for the immediate release of all insurrectionists who have been charged with or convicted of attacking the Capitol on January 6th. You know, we actually have a term for that in the law. We call it giving aid and comfort to the insurrection. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, Donald Trump is now calling for the members of the January 6th House Select Committee that investigated the insurrection. He is calling for them to be arrested for treason while simultaneously demanding that all of the insurrectionists who have been tried and convicted for attacking the Capitol on January 6th be immediately released. Here is some new reporting about that by MSNBC. Headline, Trump wants January 6th committee members to be charged with treason. It's never been altogether clear whether Donald Trump knows what treason means, though there's little doubt that he loves to casually throw the word around far more than he should. The former president has accused Barack Obama of treason, and Nancy Pelosi and James Comey. He's also eyed treason investigations into Adam Schiff, The New York Times, Google, and federal law enforcement officials. At one point, after one of his State of the Union addresses, Trump even suggested that congressional Democrats might have committed treason because they failed to applaud to his satisfaction. Because if you can't have a little fun with treason, the article continues, last night the Republican, Trump, turned to his third-rate social media platform. Third-rate is my editorial edition there. Trump turned to his third-rate social media platform to add to his unsettling list, his treason list. And then here is what Trump posted. Great job by Tucker Carlson tonight. The unselect committee of political hacks and thugs has been totally discredited. They knowingly refused to show the videos that mattered. They should be tried for fraud and treason. And those imprisoned and being persecuted should be exonerated and released now. The article continues. For now, let's not dwell on the fact that there's bipartisan agreement backed by law enforcement that the Fox News host did not do a great job. Let's also brush past the absurdity of Trump, a professed champion of law and order, calling for the immediate release of accused, and I would add convicted, felons. You know, friends, actually, let's not brush past that part. Let's not brush past the fact that Donald Trump is using his platform and his power and his authority as a former president of the United States to demand the release of convicted felons, to demand the release of insurrectionists. Let's not brush past that. The author goes on to ask the question, why take note of the former president's ridiculous rhetoric? Well, I think I have an answer to that question. And the answer can be found, as is often the case, in the big ugly blue book of federal laws, the United States Criminal Code. And specifically, it can be found at 18 U.S. Code, Section 2383, Rebellion or Insurrection. Here is how that very short federal statute reads. Whoever incites, sets on foot, assists, or engages in any rebellion or insurrection against the authority of the United States or the laws thereof, or gives aid or comfort thereto, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 10 years or both, and 
shall be incapable of holding any office under the United States. So friends, just one question. By using his platform, his power, his authority as a former president of the United States to demand the immediate release of convicted insurrectionists, does it feel like Donald Trump is giving aid and comfort to the insurrection? Does it feel like he's giving aid and comfort to the insurrectionists who perpetrated the insurrection, some of whom are still perpetrating the insurrection? You know, some people will say, yeah, but there's no precedent to apply this law, rebellion or insurrection, under these circumstances. It's never been done before. There's no precedent. Of course it's never been done before. No president of the United States has ever used his supporters to engage in an armed attack on the Capitol to try to stop the certification of his opponent's election win. Of course there's no precedent. These circumstances have never arisen before. And that is exactly why we need to do it for the first time. We have to take the maiden legal voyage. We have to break new legal ground in our determination to save our democracy. I mean, think about it. If a president could always hold up the absence of precedent as a shield against prosecution, if a president, after committing buku crimes, could say, well, but no president has ever been prosecuted before, therefore, you can't come after me. There's no precedent. Take that to its logical conclusion. That means we could never prosecute a criminal president, not while he's in office, not after he leaves office, because in order to create precedent, you have to do something for the first time. And if ever something needed to be done for the first time, holding a criminal former president accountable, it is right here, it is right now, to address the crimes of Donald Trump. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again soon.